Hey, I'm Bakers, it's Jack here, bakewithjack.co.uk, bringing you your weekly bread making tip every single Thursday. And this week is another quick fire questions round, answering your questions about sourdough bread. Roll it! Hey you guys and welcome back to another video where I share a little bit of my expertise with you to help you make amazing bread at home. If you've been here before, welcome back and thanks for hanging out with me every single Thursday. And if you're new, consider clicking that subscribe button if this is your cup of tea. Let's get to it. Upon the success of a video answering your questions about yeasted breads a couple of weeks ago, you requested one about sourdough. So here it is. Buckle up your seatbelts because this one uh, will be long. I put the request out on the community tab the other day for questions and within 48 hours, 70 uh, comments was left underneath. Seven, zero. So I'm gonna do as many as I possibly can and I hope you appreciate that. Please don't be sad if I do not tackle your question in this video. Now before we begin, the slight disclaimer, I don't claim to be an expert on sourdough bread. I have had practice, I do teach the topic, but I do not know everything. There are even things that even my mind cannot comprehend because we are all learning all the time. I will do my best with the knowledge that I do have to answer your questions as best as possible and I hope it's helpful. Okay, let's go. First one from Matt Hurdle. Hi Jack, if I want to bake my sourdough the following morning, when should I refrigerate my dough? During the first proof or the second proof once it's been shaped? Also, do I bake straight from the fridge or give it time to come to room temperature? After you've made your dough and done your pre-shape and then shaped it and popped it into the basket, that is when you can put it into the fridge. Yes, you can do the bulk fermentation in the fridge. Uh, actually, you can do either. I always shape it up and then put it in the fridge and leave it. This one has been in the fridge since Sunday, I made this Sunday afternoon and it's been in the fridge and now it's Wednesday, work that one out. But yes, I take it straight from the fridge. If it looks like this, nice and puffy and healthy looking, I will take it straight from the fridge and put it into a hot oven. If you're looking a bit sad and a bit sorry for itself, I would take it out of the fridge, leave it on the side while the oven preheats for 30, 40 minutes or so, and then bake it. This one's looking quite puffy, quite domed on top. I'm quite happy with that to go straight into the oven. It's down to how you feel about it when it comes out. And that, once again, is down to practice. Okay, next question asked by two people. One of them being You Know My Name and the other one being Chris Calmajor. Mageberg, sorry. How can I avoid my sourdough spreading out when taken out of the fridge after an overnight proving? Okay, spreading out your dough is down to a couple of things. One thing is the lack of structure you've built along the way. I'm talking about stretching and folding along the bulk fermentation process, pre-shaping and creating a nice structure when you shape up. Also, it can be made trickier by having a wetter dough. The wetter your dough is, the more likely it's to, to spread out. That's just part of the game so you've got a couple of options you can either work on your stretching and folding technique or uh, take the hydration down a bit or do both what you might find helpful is video number 24 entitled how to stop your dough from spreading out flat now it's not got a sourdough bread there it's a yeasted loaf but the principle is the same and hopefully you'll recognize that also number 58 called shaping up twice that will help you out too next question by quasimodo braun says how to achieve an extraordinary other spring and open crumb with big holes okay this is down to maintaining the gas along the whole process with a yeasted bread you make the dough let it puff up smash it down let it puff up bake it with a sourdough you take your time with it and you be gentle with it because it's in a constant state of puff from beginning to end. To get the nice oven spring and the big holes you have to look after the air inside while stretching and folding along the way to create structure. You've got to be gentle with it, not knocking the air out from every stage of stretching and folding through to the pre-shape to the shape. Being gentle with it, keeping as much air in as possible uh, but creating the tension to hold the shape and hold the gas. Be gentle with it. A couple of other factors are hydration. I find it's easier to get those big holes with a high hydration loaf as long as you can manage it along the way as always. Also the flour type has an effect as well. Different flours make different texture inside. Even if it's strong white flour to strong white flour across different brands, it will make a different structure inside. And the final thing is kneading. I find when I knead a sourdough, I get a finer crumb texture than when I do not knead it as per my recipe on the blog. Next question by Matt Seeley. How do I manipulate my starter and or dough to increase or decrease the sour flavor in my final loaf? Good question. 
question. Remember a while ago, I spoke about uh, the acceleration of the puff down to the multiplication of yeast in your starter. When you get a starter and you feed it, it accelerates in puff over time. When you feed it, if you ever watch a time lapse, it goes up slowly, slowly, then super, super faster, 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 and then slows down at the top and starts collapsing over time. I find if I use it towards the end of its life when it's collapsing, it's got more acidity. It smells more like nail polish. Uh, and that brings acidity to your loaf. Also, something else I found is if you use less of it and let your dough ferment for longer, that brings more acidity. That's a few things I've discovered that helps you increase the sourness of your loaf. Some people like a real sour twang in the back of your mouth. Other people like it a little bit more subtle. But this is one way, catching it at a different point here, is one way of controlling that sourness. Next question by Wally Deadmond is, while my crust is dark, the crumb is gummy. I use a fresh start, 70% hydration, overnight rise in the refrigerator, bake at 232 degrees C, cooled for two hours. That's important, resting time, that's perfect. Well done, you do the right thing. Knife gets so gummy cutting is impossible. Help. The only thing I can say here is maybe you're not baking it for long enough. You're not baking it for long enough so that the heat reaches the center and bakes it through nicely. I don't know what sort of flour you're using. You could be using more wholemeal flour that sucks up more moisture, requires more baking time. Uh, I'm not sure, but first guess instance, bake it for longer and see. Alexandra Lippens says, should I be using different starter for different kind of breads? Do you have a single starter for every type of sourdough bread or are you a spout starter, rice starter, wheat starter, etc.? Okay, this is something that I spoke about in a course the other day about having different starters for different breads. You can make starters out of literally anything. In this sourdough book by Emmanuel, uh, Emmanuel, the sourdough guy, there's a picture, it looks like this. This is what I was referring to the other day in my class, yeah? This is all different sourdough starters made of all different stuff, literally everything. Uh, I use one single starter, which is wholemeal, 100% wholemeal rye, okay, for everything. And that's it, because I don't want to look after all this stuff. I've got three cats and two kids to look after without dealing with all this stuff as well. So I use a rye starter and because I only got one starter, there's certain things I can do to transform my loaf in terms of the flavor. One of them is making a levain by using a little bit of this and feeding it with wheat flour, like white flour, um, to make my intermittent levain to then make my sourdough with. Instead of just topping this up, puffing it up with 100% wholemeal rye and then making a loaf. That's a way you can make a completely different loaf with exactly the same starter. Second part of the same question says, I tried really hard making my own bread, but I couldn't get it working up to this date. I think I killed my bread using a different kind of all-purpose flour for the bread. I used organic all-purpose white flour. My starter died on its own. Cat. Because I think it wasn't feeding it often enough for the flour I used. Okay, I don't think, I don't believe, I don't know, but I don't believe that sourdough starter dies. As long as you've got a little bit left that's active, you can create something that's exciting. It's just about when you catch it. If you're getting sleepy and it's, and it's falling and it's just a bit sleepy than it is when it's at its peak, uh, everything's gonna be slower and that does, is affected by the kind of flour that you're using, whether it's all purpose or white or white, strong white bread flour from one brand or another brand or rye or spelt or whatever it is, it always, always varies. My advice is stick to the same type of flour and only change one thing. If you're learning stuff, only change one thing. Stick to the flour, change the time that you catch a starter, change what something else, but only one thing at a time. It'll always be different, but you have gotta spend time getting used to your starter, getting to know your starter in your own conditions at home as well. Practice, write stuff down as you go. Next up, Frederick Martins. We are using spout and rye, but I never get that open crumb. Also, the dough sticks to the basket. Yeah, you never get the open crumb because you're using spelt and rye. Rye flour essentially is gluten-free, although it's not, it's a mixed opinion. I don't know what Google says, but there's no strength and no structure. You can't get an open crumb with rye, and that's why 100% rye flour bread is dense, because there's no structure. Minimum gluten, if there is any at all, depending on who you speak to, uh, that's just the way. Spelt also has a different sort of gluten that reacts in a different way. It's more extensible and less elastic and bouncy, hence you will not get the big open crumb if you use those two things in it. The dough sticks to the basket because you didn't watch last week's video, go and check it out, it might help. And also because of the different flowers, rye turns everything into glue, make everything really gluey, so you have to uh, 
compensate for that in some way and spout being more extensible, more wet on the outside, it's just the way that it is, it's the nature of the game. Watch last week's video, hopefully that will help. Giancarlo Caretta says, Hi Jack, I use a round container after my dough has been shaped. I tried so many times to achieve a good ear, but I'm not able. Any tips? Yes, uh, go and watch video number 42. It says how to get a great ear on your loaf. There's six main factors contributing to that ear, which I will not go into now, but go and check out the video. I hope it helps. It applies to round loaves, long loaves, baguettes, whatever. Vicky Rutherford asks a question I've touched on already, but there is something else to note here. Please tell me why my sourdough loaves are always gummy. I get rise, a beautiful ear, nice crispy crust, then slice it open, cool, and yuck. Knife gets gummy, very moist, moist crumb. Is it supposed to be that way? And then there's the deal breaker. Am I comparing homemade with artificial store-bought loaves? No, it's two different things. You cannot compare it to stuff that you buy in a supermarket that's used all sorts of nonsense to make it the way that it is. It might be gummy, depending on your definition of gummy, because it's undercooked, or it might be gummy because actually the nature of the sourdough bread has got that more moist and sticky crumb inside. If it is gummy because you think it's underbaked, bake it for a little bit longer, but never compare it to what you buy in the shop. Also, Vicky asks, uh, can I make sourdough with a tight crumb so my egg salad doesn't fall through onto my top? Uh, yes, you can. I feel like the difference is in the kneading. You can use stuff like spout flour where the gluten is slightly different, but I feel like in the olden days when I used to knead sourdough bread, then it came out uh, much tighter crumb. I never used to do the stretch and fold along the way. I used to knead it instead once, all the way fermentation to the end, pre-shape, shape, rest, bake, tight crumb. Alex asks, what percent of hydration would you recommend for sourdough? I use a dough with 75% hydration, but when my doughs come out of the proving basket, they can't keep their shape very long. My recipe on the blog is 72% hydration. That's deliberate, so I can make it manageable for me, manageable from the people that come on my courses. It's exactly the same recipe. We, you will need to make it accessible for you, okay? If it's 75, 80% hydration and it's very good for the dough and for the bread and for the natural yeasts to thrive inside, but you can't manage it, there's completely no point whatsoever. Take it down to a manageable level. Uh, Alex also asks, kneading, slap and folding, or both? Uh, my answer is I don't do either of those things. I don't knead it, I don't do the slap and fold technique to develop the gluten, I literally do nothing. I mix it, and then over time, stretch and fold it to develop the gluten in the structure through the fermentation period without the need to knead. Joseph Bell says, how do you handle super wet dough? The recipe I have results in super slack, largely unneedable dough that I can't really seem to build any structure into. Okay, that's sort of carry on from what Alex said. Uh, the answer is I don't need the dough in the first place. Let the flour soak, let it soak in the moisture for a while. Give it a long time for it to soak in the moisture. And a good way to do that is to refrigerate the whole thing as a whole during the bulk fermentation. If everything's chilled down, uh, it holds together a little bit better, I find. But I feel like the, the real answer is take the moisture down a notch. Take it down until you can manage it. I spoke about this in a video a long time ago, take the moisture down to a level that you are comfortable with, you can manage, and as you're getting braver, as you're getting more confident, as things start to come together for you and looking positive, introduce a little bit more moisture at a time if you want to. You don't even have to. Adam Van uh, raises a good point. Jack, I think baking sourdough is a conspiracy. It's not real and everyone who makes it is a liar. I have never, never made a successful sourdough, 75% hydration, 50% hydration, steaming in the oven or not. Nothing works, the result is always flat, round, chewy, tight, crumb, paperweight. Nice. Unless I put a little bit of yeast in it. <whistles> Fresh or instant yeast, doesn't matter. When I'm ready to bake, I'll mix it, blah, 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 blah. When I watch YouTubes make the dough, I've seen a few bakers sneak it in, not saying anything. Is that... That's how I caught it. So how about Jack? Is there a sourdough conspiracy? No, there's no sourdough conspiracy. It's completely achievable. Those people sneaking yeast into a sourdough bread ain't making sourdough bread. The whole point of sourdough bread is a flour, water, and salt. But that's it. The starter's made out of flour and water. Flour, water, and salt is the total ingredients. If you see people sneaking yeast in, either they're scared, afraid that it's not gonna puff up, or they're cheating, straight up. It's not a lie. Real sourdough bread is a real thing. It's totally achievable in your kitchen at home. Okay, cut to me in the studio. If you are following me on Instagram, you'll be familiar with this place. I've just decided, I've realized that this video is gonna be at least 
half an hour long in order to make it more palatable for you to watch as a viewer and for me a bit more manageable to edit I'm going to cut it into two parts I hope that's okay I hope you've got value out of this already and I hope it's really helped you out so far but there's so much more to talk about the topic is absolutely massive I'll do my best to answer more questions for you uh, next week so next week bread tip number 99 will be part two of your sourdough questions answered I look forward to seeing you next week for another bread making tip Bye bye. There you go, you guys. Part one is done and part two will follow next week. In the meantime, you can find my sourdough recipe on the Bake With Jack blog. Head over to the website, click on a blog and you'll find it there. Also, if there's any bread making bits and bobs, scrapers and cloths you want to pick up from the shop, you can. It's bakewithjack.co.uk forward slash shop shipping all over the world. Thank you so much and I would look forward to seeing you next week. Bye bye.